Welcome to the Business uh, and Accounting Society at Sandberg Speakers Series. This is our second uh, presenter of the of this year, and our speaker today is Bambi Strom, who is a 2002 graduate of Carl Sandburg College, and then she went on to graduate from Knox after that. Uh, since then, she has been uh, working in the communications field in marketing and with Prairie Radio Communication and with State Farm and also now is an independent AG with, agent with PMA USA. Uh, but why she's here today, I mean certainly those things are interesting, but the reason I've invited her here today is because she and her husband run Jerry's Mojo Mobile Coffee. You may have seen them around town. If you haven't, they're parked out front over here today. And it's a pretty neat story on how they got started. And uh, she has agreed to answer questions. So if you have questions even while she's presenting, if something occurs to you, raise your hand and ask a question at that point. Otherwise, we'll have questions at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, talk. Perfect. So without further ado, Bambi Strom. Hey, hello. Nice to be here today. And like you said, I am owner of Jerry's Mojo. My husband and I, um, run this together he's actually the talent and i'm the um the one that does all the marketing and bookkeeping and none of the fun stuff um jerry and i decided uh first he already kind of gave you my background i uh, grew up in, in knoxville i graduated uh in 93 and right after um, high school went to college of dupage in wheaton illinois and i only went there a year when i decided to transfer here back to come back home went to carl sandberg and then did my aa here and got my BA at Knox. My professional background is mostly marketing, sales, public relations, and in, you know, as one of the necessary evils of that, I do a lot of bookkeeping and accounting for um, the business administration type of stuff. Jerry grew up in Watauga, and he graduated from Rova uh, High School. He attended Carl Sandburg for a little bit, and then um, went on to the work Force and his main background is customer service. He's awesome at customer service. He's actually has a large customer following from a lot of jobs past, and um, his main um, his main focus has been by managing coffee shops. And he's a great barista. He operates and uh, the business itself, the day-to-day -day operations. He takes care of the maintenance of the truck, and he does a lot of the uh, book, uh, event bookkeeping booking. He um, gets all of the messages on Facebook where people ask him to come here, can you come there? So he does a lot of the calendar. And then he also schedules the daily route that we go through on a weekly basis. Um, the way we got our idea, uh, I've always had an entre entrepreneurial spirit, even though I've worked in a lot of day jobs, I wanted to work for myself and have my own business. And we um, entertained a lot of different business ideas, but for one reason or another, they just didn't pan out. After Jerry lost his job, we just decided, you know, if it's now or never. He's, um, job, job market is what it is, and it's very hard to find management jobs, and that's what he went from was manager. And rather than starting back at the bottom in a new job, we just decided that we were going to go ahead and do our own, our own business. And so we, um, we turned in our 401ks, and we decided we were going to, you know, do something. And then a friend suggested, she lives in the Chicago area, and um, food trucks are huge. They're, you know, everybody has a food truck and they have uh, very low operating costs. She's like, you guys need to do a food truck. He's got great customer service. He's been in the food industry. You should totally do that. And after thinking about it, we realized we have all these commercial coffee machines just sitting in a storage room. We have a grinder, we have a coffee maker, just things that we have acquired through his working and managing um, different stores. It's like we have a lot of the equipment we need to convert a food truck and we thought that it would be awesome to have quality coffee tea and other beverages offered at an affordable price because you know you either get the gas station stuff which you know does the job you get you know your caffeine fix and you get to stay awake during your drive or your commute but or you have to go through to a brick and mortar um, coffee shop where you're going to spend lots of money on a quality drink and we wanted to be somewhere in the middle there. We wanted to be able to give you guys and the community quality drinks at an affordable price. And the mobile nature of the business brings the products to um, the customer, goes to the captive customer like the students or um, um, different businesses that they're 
their employees don't have a long enough break to leave for lunch or to leave to go get a cup of coffee. So they're right there, we're right there and waiting and not waiting for the customer to come to us. Uh, the first thing in the whole process after we decided we're going to do a coffee truck was we needed to find the perfect truck. And uh, we literally put the cart before the horse. Uh, we had not written a business plan. We didn't have any idea what we were going to do, but we were looking on eBay and Craigslist and we saw all different kinds of trucks. They have the ones that look like ice cream trucks or the ones that are in your normal catering trucks. And we saw this one on eBay and we absolutely, we had to have the truck. It was eye-catching. It, um, people, you know, the, the color of the truck in itself is one of those things that you cannot resist looking at and trying to find out what it has. Even still today, we've been around for four, almost four years, and people will just drive by and ask us what it is. Um, so we had to have the truck, and it was on eBay, so time is of the essence when you when you see something like that because they do go fast so we just had to buy the truck and we weren't even <laughs> we didn't even have our um, business plan together but we figured we would build it off of getting getting the truck and so first you know after we got the truck we're like okay what are we going to name the business and because Jerry does have great customer service and he's an awesome barista and after he left the coffee shop that he was managing People would ask him everywhere we went. We'd be at Walmart, we'd be at High B. They'd say, "Where are you at now? I, you know, we miss your coffee. We really, we want a, you know, to have you back. We love the way you make your coffee." And um, so we decided we were going to include his name in the business name, just so his regulars would know he's he's running his own place. And then we wanted to combine the two features that we were a mobile business and we serve coffee. So that's how we got Mojo. Uh, Mo for mobile and Joe for coffee and then mobile coffee hotspot we wanted to you know kind of impart to people that we would just pop up wherever just like you know a hotspot uh, and you will be able to find find us in different places so then we worked with Platts printing um, for our logo and we had a great um, guy that sat with us and kind of talked to us about some different concepts and we decided to go with the hotspot concept and he um, made the icon in the middle there to look like two different things. It serves two functions. One, if you look at it from, it looks like a coffee mug as you're looking down at the mug before you drink it. And then other, it also is like a map marker because we're going to be in different places. We can actually use that icon on maps and different things and identify us as the logo. We can actually just cut our logo down just to that marker in some cases and we do on our on our menus. Um, we also use the colors green and brown because green matches the truck and the brown matches the color of coffee. And then um, we came up with the slogan, always break for coffee, using the play on words with break and coffee break. And then we decided, well, it's a small truck and you can have all kinds of things at a coffee shop. So we had to decide how could we have a full service coffee truck and give everybody a variety of products and um, still maintain the small size. And it was funny because at first we had a list of all different kinds of things that we were gonna put on the truck. And we um, went down to the basics, but we still have a very good variety. And I know people always are telling us, well, I just don't drink coffee. It's like, we have all kinds of stuff. We have the hot ice uh, and blended coffee drinks, any kind of, you know, frapped up flavored thing that you could possibly want he can do with the I mean he doesn't ever keeps maybe 12 different flavors on the um, truck and he does rotate those out for season um, we also have um, the hot iced and blended espresso drinks hot and iced tea lemonade older palmers the Italian sodas have become one of the most popular things for the summer and again it's kind of you make your own uh, own soda based on the flavor that you want that he keeps on the coffee, I mean, he keeps on the truck, and he does a lot of fruity type of um, sodas and some um, orange cream, berries and cream, those kinds of things. And then, you know, what kinds of services, and we had to figure out where we were going to market ourselves. So the route, day-to-day -day route was, the original concept was to, you know, provide coffee at locations, different places where people could depend on the fact that on Friday, we're gonna be at Dick Blick and on, Tuesday, we're going to be at Carl Sandberg College, where uh, and that kind of day-to-day -day route. But we also wanted to do weddings and private events like customer appreciation days, anniversaries, weddings, birthdays. We've done fundraisers, that kind of stuff too. And then we do cross marketing to our venues. 
one of the things that we found out through the process of permits and city ordinances is that um, coffee trucks are not allowed to just go park wherever they want to park. You can't park on public streets. You can't park in public parking spots. So we are at the mercy of the places that allow us to come and park. But we needed to offer them some kind of value for that. That's my phone. <laughs> it's right there by you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we, wanted, we wanted to offer a value to the, the venues, not just, of course, that they can come out and get coffee or their employees can come out and get coffee whenever they want, but also how is having us at your spot going to benefit you. So we do a lot of cross-marketing on our Facebook page. If we're at Midwest Uniform and they're having a sale, we let them know come on into midwest uniform they're having 10 percent off for nurses week or you know um, we also will post flyers on the truck so when we're at different venues other venues are still being advertised so we try our best to become more of a resource than just you know just um beverages we want the venues to see that having us around is actually a benefit to their business as well and um, we started um, bagging, we bag beans and do um, gift certificates so that way you can um, take Mojo home and um, have coffee there as well as use our gift certificates as um, gifts for um, stocking stuffers or um, we do a lot of fundraiser um, gift certificates, that, that kind of thing. And we offer everybody free birthday drinks. So if it's your birthday, uh, come out to Mojo, let them know and he will give you a free drink. And we also offer senior military and police officer discounts which we thought that was important. It seems like it's kind of gone away in a lot of businesses. They kind of stopped doing that kind of stuff. So we want to thank the people of, and our customers. Um, as far as the venues and events, you can see us at, we have 30 different venues and that's growing all the time. We have people asking us all the time to come out and we tend to stick at some of the more frequent ones, mostly because of um, customer traffic or you know popularity. Once we're there, people really do respond to us. So some places that you can see us most frequently, Great Clips, <coughs> Farmer's Market, Carl Sandberg College, Midwest Uniform, Shoe Depot, O'Reilly's Auto Parts, um, <coughs> VA Clinic, First Midwest Bank, and Lowe's and State Farm. And then the events are a huge part of our business. If we didn't have the events, it, it really, the events make up for any slow days that you may have during your route. So you really need to have the two to complement each other and we've become staples at the Easter egg hunt that we have, that they have every year at Lakeside. Um, I guess that's over there. And um, Taste of Gelsberg has been, you know, a popular event that we absolutely, it's, it's so grueling, the four hours. We do more business in that four hours than we sometimes do, you know, in a whole week. It's, um, it's we, there's a lot of people in that one spot. Relay for Life, uh, we do every year. School events. Gale Schools Fall Festival, we're doing the um, Silas Willard ha Halloween Parade. They just want us out there. And then a lot of the times when they're doing a teacher appreciation, they ask us to just come out and, the, and serve the teachers before school. Uh, Touch a Truck is a fun one. They have out at Lake, Sto Lake Story all the time. They bring out all different kinds of trucks and the kids get to look at them and touch them. And since the, you know, the fun nature of the car, the kids love to get in and pretend like they're driving the car. And, but in the parents get coffee, so and we give the kids um, candy as well. Sturman Flyin, this is actually one of the first years we did that, but they started doing a relay at the a marathon at the beginning uh, to set it off, and so they wanted us there for coffee for all of the tired people that are about ready to run slash walk. And then semi truck cruising is always a good one at Knox. At, um, they they are usually at Sandberg Mall, but they're actually going to move to um, Knox County Fairgrounds next week. Um, next year and the walk for baby feet midway mayhem fundraisers fundraisers are huge i don't know how many different ones we actually have to turn down because there's so many that they ask us to come and do and we make sure that we give a percentage of our sales to whatever fundraiser that we're at um, as a thank you for that um then these are some of the events that this picture here is at the very beginning of the of the the steerman he had to be there before sun, sunrise, so that was a good one. And then this is the Relay for Life, the Taste of Galesburg, like I said. Um, with the Taste, it's kind of, we don't offer our normal menu. And we're one of the only bit, only businesses at the Taste that are, are mobile in nature. All the other businesses have to figure out a way to bring out their 
their products on a mobile scale so people can sample what they do. We already do that. That's what, so we already kind of have an advantage as far as the taste goes, but because we have such a wide variety of products, we have to really, um, really scale down. So we usually or only offer about four to five different drinks and we try to get as creative as possible. We've um, won several awards and you know just to give them an idea and a flavor of the different kinds of things that we can do we sell out most of the time which is a common problem for most of the businesses that are at the taste um, you never really know how much to for, you know to prepare for and every year it could be different but a lot of the times you do you do a lot of good business and sell out and then the easter egg hunt down here that's uh, me and my daughter and my godchildren getting some mojo before we go um, get easter eggs and then um, the Christmas parade, which we've only done one year, and unfortunately, it was the coldest, one of the coldest years, and it kind of, kind of deterred us from doing it again. But it was, it was really fun, and again, it was, it was the first year we were open, so it was a really great way to, to show people the car and to get them kind of excited about looking at it. When we first bought the truck, that's the other thing we did—we just drove around town. We weren't even open yet, and people would stop and, like, what is that? What are you guys going to do? And then we are a seasonal business. And one of the things that um, is a challenge for season, for food trucks in general and seasonal businesses is what do you do on your off season? So we have experimented. In the first year, we, we actually set up inside the mall. And it did keep us open all year, but at the, you know, the other seasons we've decided to not, to opt, opt not to do that just because it seems like the juice really isn't worth the squeeze. And um, sometimes we um, decide we decided just being open on the days that we can be open in the season and then op offering different options. Like the last two years, we've offered delivery on larger um, orders. So if you're having a, a business meeting and you want to you want Mojo, we will just make it and bring it to you. And um, we're going to do more of the beans and um, gift certificates and those kinds of things to try to keep us try to keep us going through our off season. Agents, uh, milestones for us. We opened up in July, on July 15th, 2013, we had a grand opening at State Farm. It was a, a Dennis Twitty State Farm. It was really good and um, ever since then, we, um, the next thing we did after that was partnered with the Sustainable Business Center and they are the incubator, the small business incubator for sustainable um, businesses out by Farm King. Their uh, main goal was to partner with businesses that are trying to be economic, I mean, environmentally friendly and that we try our hardest to do everything we can to or offer organic and um, quality products our smoothies are 100 percent um, fruit our beans are organic and free trade we um, we don't offer junk food when we do offer food we don't do a lot of food unless it's like asked or we're at a special event where they need it but when we do we make sure that it's more healthy we are trying not to just be a place where at like a mobile vending machine we'd rather be something that you can actually get something that's going to sustain you when you're going i don't know did everybody catch that their vehicle is electric yeah that was the other thing um, our vehicle is electric so low emissions we do have some emissions with the generator which we have to power we have to use to power the, the box part of it so we can run all our appliances but you know we try to cut that down as much as possible and in the places that'll let us plug in we'll plug in we won't run the generator um, but that is a necessary evil for different places that we go in May, uh, May 20th 2014 I won the um, Eagle Award for small businesses owned, uh, owned and operated by women and um, that was pretty neat and then I got to present to the person that won in 2015. Um, we started doing weddings the second season. We were really only open for about six months that first year and we hadn't, like I said, we hadn't really had our whole business plan together and I feel like every year there's some growing pains and we kind of change things up to adjust for the next season. But the weddings were a great addition. Um, the only um, downside is there are so many places that want us out of town and unfortunately being an electric truck you only can run 15 miles on a charge so you're limited to a certain radius so we have had to actually turn down weddings that are way out of town and one of our things that we're going to work on for the next season is to have a 
trailer that we can use just for out-of-town out events. And that's um, actually in the works, hopefully for next year, but definitely the season after that. And we'll have a whole separate trailer that we can pull with our Explorer or pickup truck wherever those weddings make her because it is have to turn down quite a bit of business because lots of people don't just get married inside Galesburg. <laughs> um, and then in 2014, we partnered with Monmouth Co Coffee Project. We were originally getting our coffee from Dead Poets Espresso <coughs> in the Quad Cities. We tried to keep it as local and as fresh roasted as possible. And at the time, they were the, the only people that we um, knew roasted and sold their beans. But um, but then I found out that Mama's Coffee Project was doing uh, something where they were actually taking the um, coffee beans, roasting them at different levels, and then finding out what the, the chemical makeup of the beans were. So they could say, how much coffee at this roast, uh, how much caffeine at this roast, how much chlorogenic acid at this roast, and then trying to find the perfect mix. And they actually worked with us to make our own roast. So we have a mojo roast that they don't roast for anybody else. And they do provide beans for other businesses in Monmouth and Galesburg, but they won't provide our roast to any of the other be um, businesses. So we wanted to do something somewhere in the middle. I know there's lots of um, coffee shops that just want really, really strong coffee. And then there are some people that make it a little weak. We wanted something <coughs> right in the middle with as much caffeine as possible. And the darker you roast a bean, the, um, the you're losing ca caffeine when you do that. So. We um, tried to get somewhere in the middle and until we decide to stop going with Mom and Coffee Project, but I don't see that happening uh, unless we start roasting our own. Um, we're going to stick with that roast. And then as far as the um, other milestones, we won Best Drink for um, the Taste of Galesburg, the 2013, 14, and 15 last year. <sighs> The watering holes, Arnold Palmer beat us out, <laughs> and I, I still, I still feel like we were robbed. But that's why I will them again next year. And um, but I, I didn't even try it next year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try their Arnold Palmer just so I can tell whether or not they legitimately beat us. Because I really feel like our um, blackberry lemonade was a hit there. I mean, we ran out within an hour and a half of the taste. And we had people coming the whole rest of the night behind one. I was like, if I would have known we would go through more than eight gallons, I promise you I would have brought more. And then um, in 2015, and this is very slow going, but we have, um, we have rolled it out on a temporary basis, and now we're trying to do some adjustments. We started Mojo Snapshot Promotions. One of the things that um, is great about our mobile nature of our business is, number one, we are already kind of marketing to uh, cross-marketing with our venues, but we also could be a digital mobile marker for any business or anything like that. So we got um, a digital digital um, frame and we do snapshot promotions where it's just pictures of whatever the business is and we go in, we take pictures of the front, so it's a very identifiable, like, oh, I know that place, it's over here, and then go in the same thing inside, take pictures of either their products, services, food, whatever, and there's an um, option where you can have just a picture of your storefront with your sign, or you could have multiple pictures so it tells a little story with the snapshots, but this is another revenue stream. Again, if it gives us a steady stream of revenue throughout the, the season that we're more popular, just the taste alone with that would give so much exposure to businesses that are, um, that are advertising with us um, through, you know, just just the events, not even the day-to-day -day, um, routes that we're at. It gives a lot of exposure to um, businesses, and it's it's going okay, but we're having problems with Blair. So we have to keep trying to figure out the best way to position everything and make sure that the pictures are getting seen, but it gives us a steady revenue stream that we can rely on and, or, and then, you know, add in our events and our day-to-day day -day routes Maybe I'm going to ask you, do you have, uh, um, we're getting close on time here. Do you have uh, a, a couple of slides or, or comments that you want to make to wrap things up here? This is the auction. What are the yeah. questions? Is this it? Is, yeah, this is oh, that's it. Okay, well then I'm cover your start. SBC. Uh, yep, yeah. and then we graduated from the SBC in August. So the way the incubator works is you get the first three years are the most critical for a business. Most businesses don't make it past the first three years. So they help you by uh, making cost of rent and um, 
and copies and that kind of stuff, they, they make it easier for you so you can get through that third, first three years. And we actually did, and we graduated. And now, you know, in that time, we were able to build our own our own warehouse type thing at home. So now we're completely at home, but, um, but it was the help through that incubator that allowed us to get to that spot. And now we're starting our fourth year. And hopefully we'll be expanding with more uh, the trailer and then maybe even more hot spots eventually. Do we have questions for for Pam? I have a question. Oh, oh. Uh, just meet you. Have you, just, have you thought about opening a stationary? We have, and if we do, we will probably be something like a Java station, like where you just drive through, because we don't want to get away from the mobile part of our business. I mean, we want to be who you are, and we're not a brick and mortar. So if we ever were to do that, and we have, we've looked at some different options for kind of like a kiosk thing. We don't want it to be something that you're going to just sit and have a cup of coffee. We are, we are marketing to, or our customer is the person that needs coffee on the go, wants something good, but doesn't have the time to sit around in a coffee shop. We don't want to be a competitor to the brick and mortars. We're trying to be something different. I was wondering, have you ever considered expanding to any other cities or? We get that, we get asked that a lot. Monmouth wants us to have one there, and we almost did, did get um, a spot in Monmouth, but they at first wanted us to be stationary. There was a there was a place that wanted us to have a little thing inside their restaurant that was Mojo, and we really did consider it, but then we decided, no, that's not our business model. Our business model is being mobile, and so, when we get a new truck, our first truck will probably go to Monmouth. And then we've also had people ask us to go to Kiwani and um, Knoxville. So yes, there's definitely room for expansion there. It's just manpower and that the truck. It's the truck itself is so rare. You know, we need to figure out if we're going to if we're going to duplicate that or if we're going to go to a different direction to where they all look the same and we have something that's more easy, easy to get a hold of. Any other questions? Is it just you and your husband, or do you have any other employees? Right now, it's just him and I. Um, my my dad does help out here and there. He's actually a lot with the the repairs and you know doing that kind of thing. But as far as operations go, it's him and I. If we have a big event, then we both do it. But at, Jerry's the the main guy. He does almost everything, and he works really hard at it. Um, did you get the generator issue squared away finally? We did this time. It's a, it's an annual thing. That's one thing. When you have a mobile business, even though you don't have the same overhead with power and different things, you have that to repair on the truck. Is a big deal. You guys should take a look at this if you've never seen it. Uh, if you see them around town or at any event, stop in. Of course, get something to drink. Um, but I was going to point out that uh, Jerry must be at least as tall as me, if not taller. Six four. And he's in that back of that truck, and he's kind of. <laughs> when we first saw it, we didn't know that he was going to grow. Whoa! Because we saw pictures on eBay, but when he actually got there, I was like, I hope you fit in there. But it does. It actually, the the floor is lower, so he, there's a little thing we can yeah. walk in. But he's, he's still straight. <laughs> but anyway, thank you, Bambi, oh, thank for you. coming and presenting. We appreciate your time.